Hi kids! Welcome to our online service that's been produced specially for you. Good morning boys and girls. Welcome back. We are glad to meet you again and have you worship with us. Why don't you go ahead, type in your name and tell us where you're watching us from. And if it's your first time tuning into Kids Online Service, Please don't forget to mention that in the live chat below. Last week, we learned about what it means to be sealed by the Holy Spirit. Right, children? It means that we are marked as children of God with the Holy Spirit living in us and nothing can snatch us away from God. And the Holy Spirit living within us is the guarantee for all the blessings that God has promised. This is eternal security. Before we go further into today's service, let us do a little activity. I want you to close your eyes now. Come on children, don't keep looking at me like that. Close your eyes. I will give you a few seconds to imagine your dream house. Just imagine what your dream house will look like. What will you have in your dream house? How many rooms will there be? What are the colors that you'll be using in your house? Come on children, imagine all that I told you. Is your dream house beautiful? I'm sure it is. Thinking about your dream house, it does make you happy, right children? You know children, there is a place mentioned in the Bible which is even more beautiful and better than our dream houses. Any guesses? That's right, it's heaven. We all know that when we leave this world one day, there will be only two places that we can go to, right? It's either heaven or hell and we will live there eternally. Forever. The Bible says in John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Today we will be learning about eternal life. Do you remember what eternal means? We learnt it last Sunday. Yes, it means forever that goes on and on and on without an end. And we learn more about this today. But before we go further in detail, let us pray together. Let us close our eyes and pray. Dear Father, we thank you so much for the sacrifice Jesus has done on the cross for us. We pray that your Holy Spirit will help us understand more about your love and the new life we have when Jesus comes into our hearts. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Romans 6 verses 23 says, When people sin, they earn what sin pays them, death. But God gives all his people a free gift of eternal life with Jesus, Christ our Lord. When we remember about our wonderful Jesus, let us also remember the price he paid for us on the cross. He took the punishment we rightly deserved. He did this so that we could have eternal life with God in heaven. So, whatever we are doing, whatever, let's leave it all and sing and dance joyfully for God, for His great and awesome love, because He is the eternal life giver. Good morning, boys and girls. Let's sing a couple of familiar choruses that you and your parents will know. Please join us as we sing this. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we 
children some of you look like you can sleep a little longer did you use an alarm to wake up this morning ah i did that there's something about our alarms that are unique have you noticed that all alarms have something called a snooze button when your alarm starts ringing you can hit that button and go back to sleep again that's if you want to but after the snooze time is over the alarm will start ringing again i know it's irritating you can just keep hitting the snooze button and continue sleeping <sighs> sleeping because it's nice to get some extra sleep right but here's the deal there are two problems with snooze buttons the first is that if you keep hitting that snooze button you may end up being late or miss out on something altogether imagine if you would sleep and not wake up for service oh. the second problem is that if you keep hitting that snooze button you may get so used to the sound of the alarm that you don't even hear it at all and you will sleep right through the alarm has this happened to any of you Well, children, did you know that God sometimes sounds a wake-up alarm in our lives? He speaks to our hearts and says, "It's time to wake up and follow me." Some people, when they hear that, they hit a snooze button and say, "Not now, God. Call me again a little later." Some people 
hit that snooze button so many times that they reach a point where they don't even hear God's voice. When they finally wake up, it will be too late. Yes, children, and that is what happened in our Bible story, which I will be narrating to you today. Jesus said, there was once a very rich man. He had fancy clothes and everything he wanted, but he never took time for God. He lived for himself and the things he wanted. Now outside the rich man's house, outside his gate, there was another man named Lazarus. Lazarus didn't have much. He had a lot of sores. He was sick and hungry. He was so hungry that he wanted the crumbs that fell off the rich man's table. One day, Lazarus died and the angels took him up to heaven. The rich man also died, but he didn't go to heaven. He went down to hell. The rich man could see Lazarus and others in heaven. So the rich man called out to Father Abraham and said to him, Please send Lazarus. Let him dip his little finger in the water and touch my tongue because the fire is too hot. Abraham called back to the rich man and said, Remember that in your life you had good things while Lazarus received bad things. Now Lazarus is in comfort and you are hurting. There is too much space between where you are and where we are. We cannot come to you and you certainly cannot come to us. Then the rich man asked Abraham to send Lazarus to his family house to tell his brothers how to get to heaven. The rich man did not want anyone to end up in hell because he finally realized that hell is a terrible place. But Father Abraham told the rich man that his family could read the Bible and listen to the prophets. He said that the rich man's family would not listen even if Lazarus was raised from the dead to go back and talk to them. Now why did Jesus tell us this story? Because the Lord Jesus wanted to tell us that there really is a heaven and hell. When we finish our life on this earth, we will go to one of them. And how we live here will matter. If we trust Jesus and believe in him, we will go to heaven and be with God forever. But if we choose to do what we want and live for ourselves, instead of trusting in the Lord Jesus, we will certainly not go to heaven. So what's it going to be? What's your choice? Do you want to wake up and listen to God and follow him? Or do you want to hit that snooze alarm, saying, later, Lord? No, no snoozing, no saying later. We're only going to say, now, Lord. Okay, so those of you who agree with me, would you pray with me? Come on, let's close our eyes. Let's join our hands and look to God. Father, we just want to thank you, God. We want to thank you for this day and we want to say, God, that we really want to be with you in heaven. Forgive us for always wanting to go to sleep when we should be wide awake. Help us, Lord, not to press the snooze button anymore in our lives. Help us to be awake, to trust in you and to do everything that you want us to do so that we will enjoy eternal life in heaven with you. We thank you that you have made a way through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And today we accept that way. We do not postpone it any longer, O God. We just accept the Lord Jesus and say thank you for making a way that each of us can go to heaven and be with you forever. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus we pray. Amen. And all the children said, Amen.
I hope you all like the story. Now let's check if you were listening properly and if you all understood what was taught today. I will be asking you a few questions and you have to quickly type in your answers in the live chat section. Are you ready? Here we go. What do you mean by eternal? Option A until the end. Option B forever. Option C until we die. That's right children. Eternal means forever. Something that goes on and on. Here comes the next question. Where did the poor man Lazarus go when he died? Option A, hell. Option B, heaven. Option C, palace. Absolutely right. Lazarus was enjoying his stay with God in heaven. Excellent everyone. You were all just amazing. Great going. Are you ready to learn the power verse for the week? It's from John chapter 3 verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. I want all of you to read it along with me now. John chapter 3 verse 16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now children, are you ready to fill in the missing words? Great! For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Well done everyone. Let's all read it one more time together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's the power verse for the week. John 14 verses 2 says, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? The Father knows us, loves us, and has sent His Son to save us, to be with Him forever. In this verse, Jesus assures us that no matter what, we are going to have eternal life with Him forever. We know that every promise in God is yes and amen in Christ because He loves us unconditionally. All we need to do is trust in Him and declare every promise. So let's stand up confidently in faith, hold our Bibles high up in the air and say this out loud, bold and strong. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, 
prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His word, I believe His word, and I live by His word. Christ is my master, and to Him I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello children. Today we've been talking about heaven and hell. Hmm. So, what is heaven? Do you know what heaven is like? Do you know who lives there? Do you know how we can get there? And who is in charge out there? Too many questions, right? In the beginning of today's service, when we asked you to imagine your dream house, you filled it up with all the things that you like, right? Well, heaven is just like that. Heaven is a place where you can have everything you ever need. It is filled with peace, filled with joy and hope and love. And it is a place without any tears of crying or pain or even death. It is a place that is even more wonderful than your dream house. And this wonderful place called heaven lasts forever. Now children, our time here on earth has its limit. We will not live here forever. One day we will grow old and we will have to leave this place. And when that time comes, there will be only two places where we will go to. One is heaven and the other is hell. Heaven is actually a beautiful place that God and Jesus lives in. Tell me children, where do you think heaven is? Is it in the sky? Or can we search it on Google Maps? Is it somewhere here on earth? How do we get there? Do we take a cab? Or an airplane? Now the truth is that there are still so many things that we really don't know about heaven unless we actually go there. But there is still a place where we can find some answers about what heaven is like. And how do we get there? Where do you think we can find some answers children? Yes, it is in the Bible. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, No one has ever seen, no one has ever heard, no one has ever imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. Now children, from this verse, we can really tell that heaven is a special place made only for people who love God and believe in Him. Even though we don't really know what heaven looks like, God did give someone a special dream to show him what heaven is like. Any guesses on who he was? Yes, it was John, an apostle of Jesus, and it's mentioned in the book of Revelations chapter 4. We see that God gave John a special dream where he had a mini tour around heaven. And that was a beautiful journey for John to experience heaven. Such a beautiful place to live in forever with no sadness, no crying, or pain that God has prepared for those who love Him. Now the real question is, 
who can enter heaven the bible says in revelation chapter 21 verse 27 that only those whose names is written in the book of life can enter the gates of heaven book of life how can we get our names in the book of life where can we find this book or can we just take a pen and write our names on it? Well, just like us, there once was a very curious man who wanted to know the answers too. And his name is... Any guesses? Yes, Thomas, Jesus' other disciple. When Jesus told his disciples that he was going to heaven to prepare a place for us, he was unsure and he wanted to know the way to the place where Jesus was going. Hmm. So he asked Jesus, Jesus, how can we know the way? And then Jesus replied saying, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no one could get to the Father except through me, through Jesus. This means that there is simply no other way for us to get to heaven unless we turn to Jesus. If we believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven and accept him into our hearts as our Savior and our Lord, then we will be able to have our names written in the book of life and we will enter the gates of heaven one day. So children, it's not just about us being good boys or very good girls or us doing a lot of nice and wonderful things. I mean, yes, those are all great things, but the truth is that even if we make mistakes, even if sometimes we get weak, get angry and upset and mischievous, let's not be disappointed because what matters to God is our heart that turns to him now let me ask you children what would happen if you were really caught in a river of fire like imagine being in a place where a volcano erupted ouch that would be really bad right have any of you accidentally burnt your finger maybe when you were eating hot hot food or accidentally in the kitchen painful right so being hurt by fire is really no joke children but why are we talking about fire now revelations chapter 20 verse 15 says and if anyone's name is not found in the book of life he was thrown into a lake of fire you see children and in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 41 to 42, it says, Son of man, that is Jesus, will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all who cause sin and all who do evil. The angels will throw them into blazing fire. There, the people will cry and grind their teeth with pain. Children, this is what hell is like. It's a very unpleasant place, children. Now, God doesn't want us to go to such a place. In fact, God never created heaven for people. It was created for Satan and his demon. It was never for people. And that is why he is giving us time here right now in this earth to repent and to turn to him, to believe in what he has done for us on the cross and to accept him into our hearts so that we will not have to enter Satan's place of hell one day. But you know, very sadly, children, people do not want God's love. They only want to listen to the world and only want to follow what they want. After they die, and leave this world there won't be any place for them in heaven because 
they choose to reject God while they were alive here on earth. Is this scaring y'all children? Shouldn't be. God doesn't want to scare us. In fact, God loves us so much that he wants to warn us about the evil one and about heaven. We do not need to be afraid of hell because God has given us a big, big way to get to heaven. And that is to believe in Jesus and all that he has done for us in the cross. Now, I want to ask you a big question, children. Do you want your loved ones, your parents, your siblings, your grandparents, your friends to join you in heaven one day? Yes, right? Now, how can we do that? God is telling us about heaven and hell, not just for us to keep it to ourselves, but it is for us to join him in helping those that we love to know God, to accept him and make heaven even more crowded with all our loved ones in it as well. We want to see all our loved ones in heaven with us, right? And we don't want anyone to go to hell, right? So remember to help more people get to know God so that they are on a path to heaven instead of hell. And one of the ways to do that is to share the good news of Jesus to the people around us. It can be like inviting them to church one day or praying for them, talking to them about Jesus and letting them know about Jesus' love when they are in trouble, sharing with them about what you have learned in Sunday school or just sharing with them how Jesus helps you in your own life. So remember children, the only way to heaven is through knowing Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. And the only way to get everyone else is to share that same good news to the others. Children, we learned how a simple decision that we make here on earth determines where we'll be for the rest of eternity. Simply repeating a salvation prayer does not take us to heaven. It's the decision to trust in Jesus and to follow him for the rest of our lives that will take us to heaven. So if there is anyone here today who is watching us online and you have never experienced the love of Jesus in your life, you want to commit your life to Jesus and enjoy him in eternity, let me tell you, today is the day that you have this opportunity. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to come before you to surrender and submit our lives to you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your precious gift of life, your precious gift of salvation that is freely available to us, Father. We ask that you come into our lives this morning. We completely surrender and submit ourselves to you. We invite you into our lives, Holy Spirit. We invite you into our lives, Jesus. We pray that from this moment onwards, that our lives will be a testimony for you and that we will walk in your way all the days of our life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing our prayers, for receiving our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13 and 14, Anyone who asks the Lord for help will be saved. But before people can trust in the Lord for help, they must believe in Him. And before they can believe in the Lord, they must hear about Him. And for them to hear about the Lord, someone must tell them. Children, many in the world are not aware or know about Jesus. They don't know about his love and the beautiful place called heaven that he has prepared for the children of God. So it is our responsibility to share with others 
the good news of Jesus and bring many more to enjoy heaven with us. Shall we pray and make a commitment to tell others who don't know Jesus about him so they won't have to be left behind or spend eternity in a place other than heaven. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that we know you. Thank you that we are saved by your love and by your grace. And thank you, Father, that you love us immensely. Just like us, Father, you love every person in this world. And we pray at this time, especially, Father, that you will give us the wisdom and the knowledge and the courage to talk about you and to share your word with all our friends and family and people in our neighborhood who don't know you yet. We want, Lord, that everybody who we know knows you so that we can be together in eternity and enjoy you and your presence. We don't want anybody, Lord, to go to a place other than heaven. And for this, we pray that you will fill us, that you will guide us and give us your wisdom, Father, that we will go out and share your good news. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
enjoyed today's online service and we'd love to hear from you. Tell us what you think. Write your comments in the live chat or send an email to kidsonline at apcwo.org. Also, don't forget to visit us online at apcwo.org slash kids online. We have fun activities and challenges for you to do children. And remember, if you do a good work and send it to us, we may include it in our upcoming online services. So make sure you go to apcwo.org slash kids online and do one or more of those activities, children. Now, before we close, is anyone's birthday coming up this week? That's wonderful, children. Why don't you type in your name, your birth date and your age in the live chat so that we as a team can wish you a pray for you. Now, have you always had questions about the Bible? about Jesus or how to live for Jesus and didn't know whom to ask? Why don't you email your questions to us children and we'll do our best to answer it in our upcoming online service. The email to write to is kidsonline at apcwo.org. We look forward to hearing from your children and now before we close, let's pray. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for today's Kids Online service. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us today about eternal life and how important it is for each one of us to receive this eternal life. Lord, bless each child who has already made this commitment to Jesus. Help them, Lord, to walk every day in their commitment. Also, Lord, bless every child who is in the process of making this decision. Holy Spirit, empower them, Lord, to make their commitment to Jesus and to live for Jesus every day of their lives. Lord, bless the children who are not able to attend today's service, Lord. Help them to attend this coming services, Lord. Lord, bless the children who are sick, Lord. Right now, we speak the stripes of Jesus upon them and we declare them healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing our prayer and thank you for doing this, Lord. We commit this new week in your mighty hands, Lord. Empower us to live for you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Bye, children. See you next Sunday. Bye, everyone. See you all on Zoom. Bye-bye. See you next week.